Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of the multivariable change of variable theorem. Let's consider the region bound by the four lines. We'll look at x minus y equals 1, x minus y equals 3, that's the first pair of lines. And the second pair of lines will be x plus y equals 2 and x plus y equals 4. So I have four lines in space and these four lines will intersect. And in fact the slope of these two lines, the slope of the first two lines is the same and the slope of the second two lines is the same. So we'll see this is actually going to be a parallelogram. So I have the region defined by those lines and so let's try to roughly sketch this region. If we were to roughly sketch this region, Here's x and here's y. This first set of lines, if x plus y is equal to 2, what we'll have over here is that's the point, that's the point 2 and that's the point 2 over here. Then x plus y is equal to 2 looks like this. That's the line it looks like, looks like that. And then if x plus y is equal to 4, it's the same line, it's a parallel line to that, just at 4. So those are parallel lines, like so. And then if um, what this first equation would say over here is this would say that y is equal to x plus 1. So y is equal to x plus 1 shifts up by one unit. So by throwing the y on the other side and subtracting the 1, I'll have this first equation over here is the same as saying that y is equal to x minus 1. And this equation over here says that y is equal to x minus 3. So if y is equal to x plus 1, that goes down one unit on the x-axis, right, with a slope of 1. So let's draw that in another color. And then, if I have y equals x minus 2 goes down by 3 units, a little bit further down over here, approximately, I'm just giving a rough sketch of this, of this region, like that. And so the region that we'll have, of course that, the intersection points off, but be a region that looks like this, and that region is a parallelogram because we know that this is parallel to this, and that this is parallel to this. So we have a parallelogram over here. So that's my region. Let's call this region over here D. Okay? What I'd like to find now is I'd like to find the double integral over this region D, it's going to be very complicated to parameterize as a type 1 or type 2 region, so we don't even want to do that. Of what? Let's do a x minus y cubed over x plus y dx dy. This is the integral we'd like to find. Now, this is going to be a complete mess to expand this out, to try to put parameterize, to put the elements of integration in. So I'm just going to switch right away to the change of variable theorem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce new variables. I'm going to let u be x minus y, and I'm going to let v be x plus y. Then, from this, what do we know are limits are going to be? Well, according to this schematic, I know that u starts at 1 and goes to 3. So u goes between 1 and 3. And v goes between 2 and 4. 2 less than or equal to v less than or equal to 4. Right? So I have a very simple, so while this region is very complex in the xy coordinates, this region is very simple in the uv coordinates. So I'm going to change the problem to uv coordinates. So what we'll do is we'll use the change of variable theorem, which states that what? The double integral over region d of f of xy dx dy is equal to the double integral over a new region d tilde with new limits, my new limits over here, then f of x of u and v, y of u and v, and then times the Jacobian, the determinant of the Jacobian, which is the determinant of partial x, partial u, partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, partial y, partial v, du, dv. So I need partial x, partial u, partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, partial y, partial v. Now for this particular example, since it's a linear, trans it's a linear transformation, I can actually find x and y explicitly in terms of u and v. Otherwise, if it was a nonlinear relationship, we'd have to use implicit differentiation to find partial x, partial u, partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, partial y, partial v. We'll see how to do that in another video. But for the time being, let's take those two equations and make the deduction. So my deduction over here is that what? But if I add those two equations together, if I add these equations together, I will have that 2x is equal to u plus v. So x is equal to u plus v over 2. That's what x is equal to.
Now, if I take these equations, if I take v minus u, v minus u, v minus u will be 2y. So y will be equal to v minus u over 2. So now we can compute this Jacobian. So what's our Jacobian over here? Our Jacobian is going to be the determinant of what? It's going to be the determinant of partial x partial u, that's a 1 half, partial v, x partial v, that's also a 1 half, partial y partial u, that's going to be a negative 1 half, and then partial y partial v, that's going to be a positive 1 half. So this determinant will turn into a 1 fourth, and then minus, minus a quarter, that's going to be a fourth plus a fourth, so our Jacobian over here is exactly equal to 1 half. So we have a constant Jacobian, which is very nice. It's a, it's a consequence of the fact that this is a linear transformation. Okay? So our Jacobian term over here is just going to be 1 half. So now we can perform our, our, our um, we can do our integration. So our integral over here, the double integral over d of x minus y cubed over x plus y dx dy is going to be the integral. My u goes from 1 to 3. My v goes from 2 to 4. Then I have x minus y cubed. x minus y cubed is u cubed. And then my x plus y is going to be v, so I have over v. I have to plug in my Jacobian now, so I have a times 1 half. Then the 2 to 4 were the v limits of integration, and the 1 to 3 were my u limits of integration. I can rectangular separate this. By rectangular separation, this is the integral from 1 to 3. Those are my u limits of u cubed du. The 1 half comes out of everything, 1 half, times the integral from 2 to 4 of dv over v. So let's do this. This is 1 half, and then this is u to the fourth over 4, so u to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 1 up to 3, times, well, this will be the natural log, so it's going to be the natural log of 4 over 2. So that's just a natural log of 2. So over here, I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have an 81 over 4 minus 1 over 4. So that's going to be a, so 81 over 4 minus 4 over 4, that's going to be an 80 over 4, so that's going to be a 20 over here. So let's see, so let's simplify this. This is 1 half, and then 81, because 3 to the 4th power is 81 over 4, minus 1 over 4, that's going to be 80 over 4, and natural log of 2. And so what we'll have over here is this is going to be 80 over 4, 80 over 4 is 20, 20 divided by 2 is 10, so this is going to be 10 natural log of 2. So this integral will simplify, and the final answer is just 10 natural log of 2. So when my region of integration was fairly complicated, even like a, like a tilted parallelogram, a rotated parallelogram, I'll introduce a linear change of coordinates, change variables, using the change of variables theorem for multiple integrals to find the answer relatively straightforward way. Thank you very much.